Hi everyone, today I'm gonna do my second trimester video. If you haven't seen, I did one for my first trimester, so I'll have it linked uh, somewhere up here so you can watch it. But if you like this kind of videos, then please uh, let me know in the comments. And also like and subscribe if you haven't yet, because yeah, I would love to do more like these, and I'll definitely do a third trimester one in the future as well. I can't believe I'm doing this video, because last time that I talked to you guys about my pregnancy, or when I did my first trimester one, I think I was 17 weeks. Um, 29 weeks right now, it's the 20th of August. Instead of showing you my belly at the end, I'm gonna show you my belly now, so let's go ahead. There we go, ignore the shorts. But that's my belly uh, right now, quite big, as you can see, it's definitely there, so yeah. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sort of in a timeline way, go through everything that's happened this trimester with appointments and what's happening those and symptoms and that kind of thing. The second trimester goes from week 13 to end of 27. So yeah, what I have first here that I put in my notes is that from week 14, I had less nausea from 14 to 17. If you guys haven't seen my first trimester video, um, I'll say it now. I had really, really bad nausea and yeah, vomit and all of that throughout my first trimester. So definitely from week 14, but definitely from 17, there was a huge improvement. And it only happened when I was starting to get hungry. So I would be fine and then I'll just get really hungry and suddenly it's either I eat something right now or I go to the toilet and vomit. So yeah, but at least, you know, it's somewhat manageable because you can just have something to eat and then you feel okay or you definitely feel better and then from week 26 or from week 20 to 26 I definitely didn't really have any nausea not that I can remember and then from 26 to now it's again to the point where when I'm hungry I feel sick again but definitely more manageable and again if I have snacks then I know that I'm okay and I'm not I'm not gonna run to the toilet whereas in the first trimester there was nothing I could do really Week 16, we had a midwife appointment. In every appointment since then, I have to provide a urine sample, which they check for protein for preeclampsia and other things. So yeah, they just check that. And they also gave me the whooping cough uh, vaccine, which they offered to you from week 16. Again, you can either take it or not, but I took it and that protects me, I guess, and the baby definitely uh, the first few weeks after the birth. Yeah, it didn't really give me any symptoms, which is good, because usually with vaccines, I always get a fever. So I was a bit worried because, you know, you can take paracetamol during pregnancy, but I didn't really want to. So I was a bit worried. I didn't want to have to take anything. And yeah, I didn't want to get a fever and I didn't get it. The only thing I got was just a bruise on my arm, which is again, very normal for me when I get a vaccine, but that was good. And we also got to hear the heartbeat, which we hadn't heard up until that point. We'd seen it, but we hadn't heard it. So that was quite nice as well. Uh, week 16, again in six days, we did a private scan. So the NHS here in the UK only do two scans for you, one in week 12 and one in week 20. You can see if you want to know the gender or sex of your baby, they'll let you know in the week 21, but you can actually see it from week 16. So we just went to a private clinic, scan clinic, sort of thing that you just go in, not an actual hospital. And we did a private scan. Uh, it was, I think it was 50 something pounds. Plus then we bought the video and that kind of thing. So it's a bit more, but the actual scan, it was 50 something pounds. And in that one, uh, they check, you know, that everything's okay. And also they can tell you if it's a boy or a girl. So that's what we wanted to know. Cause you know, it doesn't matter. You can, you can wait four more weeks, but we just didn't want to have to wait. And yeah, so we did it. And I don't know if you guys have seen, I've said it before, but it's a boy, so yeah. We're having a little boy and then, yeah, we told our families and all of that. So the next thing that I have is uh, from week 17, I definitely uh, had a bigger belly at that point and I'm a front sleeper normally. At that point, I couldn't really sleep on my front anymore from week 16 or so. It was just not possible. The belly was in the way, I just couldn't do it. During pregnancy, they recommend that you don't sleep on your back because the weight, and obviously at the beginning it doesn't matter as much because it's not that heavy, but they recommend that you, you know, get used to not doing that as early as possible because otherwise when the baby's bigger and you have a bit, uh, bigger belly, the weight of the belly, the baby, the placenta, all of it sits on top of uh, the vein or artery, whatever it is, where the blood flows basically. So if you're sleeping on your back, uh, it can cause some issues later on. So they recommend that you sleep on your side and especially your left side. I couldn't do it. I found it, you know, 
out of all the positions that I could sleep, that's the most uncomfortable for me. So I bought a pregnancy pillow. And it's not one of the classic ones, I've got it here to show you. It's not one of those all around you because with the heat, obviously my second trimester has been during the summer. And it's been quite hot in the UK this year as well with heat waves and everything. I didn't want to have something all around my body, I just found that. I didn't want to do that, so I found this pillow, actually it came up as an ad on Instagram and I was like, that's what I'm looking for, so I bought it. And it just looks like this, it's two sides, your body goes in the middle and then one side supports your back, one side supports your belly. And it helps prevent you moving onto your back because you do have that pillow on your back and it supports your belly and then it means that I can also have my normal pillow on my head and then I use another no normal like spare pillow that we have between my knees because if you're sleeping on your side all night you can get hip pain and back pain and that kind of thing and I do every single day get up with hip pain which is very uncomfortable but it goes away after a few seconds but it's definitely there and it's from sleeping on your side uh, and that's something that happens pregnant or not but obviously when you're not you can move around when you're pregnant you're not supposed to move that much into the different positions. But yeah, that pregnancy pillow has been a lifesaver. I've been using it every single day. Really, really glad that I bought it. And as I said, my belly has been growing since. From week 19, I was also able to eat full meals again. And if you haven't seen my first trimester one, I'll mention it again, but I struggled with nausea and not being able to eat. I could eat like toast, uh, crisps, an apple, that kind of thing, but I couldn't eat like a full meal. And from week 19, I was able to eat a full meal again. So from, I don't know, 14, 15, whatever, to 19, I was able to eat little things. So if I was having uh, like an itsu, like sushi and that kind of thing, and I obviously vegetarian and vegan, but that's what I eat anyway. So for me, it's the same. Uh, I could eat a couple of the avocado rolls, but maybe four and that's it. But from week 19, I was able to have like a full pizza again and that kind of thing, which for me was just like crazy because yeah, I had been about 16 weeks that I wasn't able to do that. So that's yeah, crazy. And then uh, week 20, that's when I had my NHS 20 week scan, which they call the anomaly or anatomy scan. Uh, had it cancelled, was supposed to be 20 weeks and two days, had it cancelled to 20 weeks and five days. But they basically go and check every single part of the baby to see that everything's okay. And obviously just the things that they're able to see, there's so much that could happen that they're not able to see at that point, they're not able to see at all inside of you, but the things that they can, uh, they check. So they go body part by body part, really, and they check, um, you know, the brain that has the parts that it's supposed to, the heart, it has the four chambers, the bones, and all of that. And it's quite cool, actually, I didn't know you could see, like, the blood flow, so they have, like, an overlay where it's red and blue, and you can see the blood flowing into the heart one color and flowing out the other color, Again, as an overlay, obviously. But it's quite cool to actually see all of that and then go into the kidneys and all that stuff. So it was quite cool. And they checked the face as well, like the nose and the lip uh, for cleft uh, palate. Is that what it's called? The cleft lip. Uh, and all of that. So it was all good. And they also confirmed, because I was like, I know it's a boy. I know we've seen it. And I think it's more difficult to get it wrong with a boy because there's something that you're actually seeing on why it's a boy, but I just wanted it confirmed again, just in case, and they were like, yes, definitely, this is a boy. And I was like, okay, cool. Just for reassurance, you never know. Baby movements. So from week 17, 18, I was able to feel some movements internally, but just a bit like, it's a bit like gas, but you know, it's different and that kind of thing. But from 21, I think it was the actual movements that I was feeling a bit more. And then week 23, my husband was able to feel it. So from week 17, 18, whatever it was to 21, it was all internal, things that I could notice. But from 23, you could actually feel it on the outside. So you could put your hand uh, on your belly, at someone's hand on your belly, and they could actually feel, they could actually feel the kick, which was quite cool. And then from 24, 25 weeks, the movements and the kicks were a lot more frequent. And now, I mean, he moves all the time. He's trying to escape like an alien. I'll put some uh, videos up here because it's quite cool to have them. I don't know. I try to film it when I know that he's moving uh, quite strongly just to have it as a little memory and that kind of thing. Week 24 as well, I had my glucose test, which I know in the United States, I think they do it routinely for everyone. In the UK, you need to have a risk factor. Uh, for me... I've got PCOS and I don't know if I'm going to do a different video on this or not, I don't know. They test you for gestational diabetes just in case and basically it's quite simple. I mean, you go in on an empty stomach like you hadn't had food from the night before. They do a blood test, they make you drink 
this little glucose drink which I'd heard everyone say it's awful and to be fair I thought it was fine it was just like artificial lemon sort of thing uh, but I thought it was fine it was okay and then you have to sit in the waiting room for two hours they don't allow you to walk around and stuff obviously you can go to the toilet and that but aside from that you have to sit there for two hours and then after the two hours they do another blood test and then they compare the samples and all that stuff so it came back negative which was great news and it doesn't mean that you're not gonna have it you could still develop gestational diabetes but I think most people who are gonna get it, get it by that point. So yeah, they kind of rule it out a little bit, but they still monitor you, maybe? I don't know, not really, but you know. So yeah, that was negative and that was fine. And then from then onwards, it's just more the being uncomfortable. So back pain, I've got, if I stand too long or if I'm sitting in different positions, I do get back pain. So I bought one of those, don't have it here, but one of those pregnancy belly bands that you put around your belly and your back. And it's been quite helpful as well. It's got like different, just got it from Amazon, like the bestseller one. It's got different bands for the different trimesters. So you can actually use it from the first trimester, but for the second and third, they're like stronger bands. And it just really holds your belly and your back together somehow. Like it feels really silly that it's gonna help, but it really does support it. So I'm quite glad that I bought those. For my week 26, uh, I was going to the midwife. I was going to another midwife appointment for week 26. You have to bring in a urine sample, but I mean, I don't know if this is too graphic, but they give you a little tiny bottle, like the opening for the bottle is super tiny, so I'd rather do it at home in my cup that I've used for all my pregnancy tests, ovulation tests and all of that, that it's, you know, dedicated for that and then transfer it to the other one. I forgot to do it in the morning, so I peed normally and then I was like, oh no, I forgot the sample. So then I tried to drink a couple glasses of water so I was able to provide a sample and I threw them up. I threw up all the water. It just made me feel really sick. It's that thing again where if I don't eat or if I'm just having a lot of water, I just get really sick again. But it's not been that bad. If my first trimester was just like that sickness, I would have been completely fine. So yeah, in that sense, I'm like, it's manageable. It's fine. I'm okay with it, but it's come back as a symptom. And also acid reflux and heartburn. Obviously, as your belly grows, your stomach kind of gets pushed up and squished a little bit so acid reflux all the time um, like an hour after every meal it's like you know uncomfortable I've been taking some Rennies uh, sometimes especially if I'm not at home and it's more uncomfortable that way uh, but yeah that's been happening a lot and I get a lot more tired when I'm standing and also faint in terms of I feel faint I haven't fainted but I feel like I'm about to if I'm uh, outside especially if it's quite warm and yeah I'm standing somewhere or whatever it is if I'm not moving then I get really faint and really dizzy really quickly so that's been a bit of a struggle but it's been okay uh, for the most part and that's kind of it. Uh, another one of the symptoms, which I mentioned in my first video, was my congested nose. That's still there. That's still there. And I think it's gonna stay there until the end. But aside from that, that's it for my second trimester. So I'll come back with the third trimester update uh, in the future. But for now, that's everything that I wanted to share with you guys. Hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe, as I said. And I'll see you guys later with another video. Bye!